All right, so uh, we've made some changes to our Docker Compose file in the last video when we assigned these environment variables to be whatever was set on the Ubuntu server. Uh, and so uh, what we need to do is we need to add these to Git. So we'll do a git add dash dash all. Actually, first of all, let's make sure I save it. It looks like, uh, I guess we pushed those changes after we made that. I don't think we did, but let's just say git commit dash m uh, env changes. Okay, so there we go. So we made uh, a couple of changes. And then we want to do a git push. And then let's go back to our git repo. And let's open up my docker compose.prod file. Let's just make sure the updates got taken. And it looks like they did, so perfect. So now that we have our final application code within git, let's go to our production server. And let's, uh, first of all, let's create a, uh, a folder to store our application. So I'm gonna create a folder called app. I'm gonna cd into app. And then we're gonna, cl uh, we're gonna clone our git repo, so. Copy this. I'm going to say uh, git clone and then clone it into our current directory. And so now if I do an ls, we should see all of our application files. And so now, just like we did on our local machine, let's uh, run a Docker compose up and let's see if this works on our production server. So we're going to say docker compose. And then we're gonna say dash F, and then we'll do docker dash compose dot YAML, and then dash F, and then docker dot compose dot prod dot YAML. And we'll say up with the dash D flag. And because there's no images already on this machine, because we just installed Docker, it should automatically build our node image as well. So let's run that. And I realized I made a mistake. So you can see here, uh, this should be indented one slot back. I'm not sure what happened in my production example, but that got uh, a little rearranged. So just move that over. And that's why he was saying that there was an error on that specific line. So we got that fixed. Uh, now, unfortunately, we have to do a git uh, add again. And then a git commit. And then a git push. And then we go back to our server and we could just do a git pull. All right, and so now we've got those changes. And now let's run that same command. All right, so it's building our image, perfect. All right, and now it looks like it's finished. Let's do a Docker PS. Uh, we can see that we've got all of our containers up and running. And now let's go ahead and actually just send a request to our server. So I'm going to pull up the IP address of my no, of my uh, DigitalOcean droplet. And then let's go back to Postman. And I'm going to just create a new request. So we'll go to HTTP colon slash slash. Put that IP in. Uh, we don't need to put in a port because it's listening on port 80, so you could do that, but it's the default. And then here we want to go to slash API slash v1 slash, uh, let's just get that one. Let's just see if that works. All right, and we can see it says hi there, so it looks like things are working, but I also want to log in. So we'll do uh, users uh, login. Well, actually, we have to do sign up because remember, uh, we deployed uh, this on a different server, so there's nothing in our database, so we have to actually sign up first. And let's set our body, we'll do raw, then JSON. And then here we'll say username, Sanjeev. And then we'll say password, password. And this is gonna be a post request. All right, and it looks like that works. So it looks like, I think it's pretty safe to say that our application is now working in our production environment and everything has been deployed properly.